Eris, you don't have to sit here and talk to me too long. You can check out what we're all about. So. You got our website, our church website? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, you know about our abortion thing and all the stuff that we do? Yeah, you have a crisis pregnancy center, but see, um, crisis pregnancy centers won't make abortion illegal. Men in our yeah. community need to actually make abortion illegal in the land, you know, and there's no cry out. And not only that, but we have 14 or 13,000 orphans in Texas in the foster care system, like these kids right here, uh -huh. which we adopted out, but um, 13,000 that will age out. And the reason they're gonna age out is because Christians, people who say they're Christians, don't want to adopt them because they're yeah. broken, they're molested, they're jacked up, they got problems, right? But yeah. there's 70,000 pastors. Like if just the pastors suffered and adopted these kids, there would be none, you know? Because the foster care system is really evil and wicked. Like they actually train, like if you said, okay, you know what, I'm convicted, I'm gonna adopt some kids, okay? Like let's just say you did that. You would have to sit in classes with gay and lesbian Christians. That's who's getting the kids, Yeah. all right? Yeah. Not like, people that drive Ferraris or Beamers or have, you know, like these houses with two kids, you know, so all we're saying is, you know, we, we adopted six of them. All we're saying is, is like, where's the church, you know, like. I know that we have a lot of people that, that we have a number of people that foster, we have a lot who adopt. Right. And they're do adopting from the states and from other countries. Right. And it's, uh, it's I see all the stuff too that's going on. I, I work for a nonprofit that, that does a lot of work locally. Yeah. And are building a school and they're digging wells and stuff like that. And yeah, and we're not saying you should stop that. that. No, I understand. <laughs> I'm saying I, I understand all of that. But see, my heart is more for that's a lot of people. I mean, we need to do more for the kids that are around us. We need to take care. And I, it's not being selfish to take care of our own kids first, like you're, you're talking about. We've got starving kids right here in Dallas. They're on the streets. Kids, teenagers, that are going to school. They don't have any any right. parents loving on them or taking care of them or providing for them. And the teachers do the best they can to, to make sure no, they I, have meals and clothes. I understand. So but what happens is what when we saying. have a culture that says it's okay and we don't oppose it, you know, um, killing is child sacrifice really what yeah. it is, is babies in the womb, then nobody cares about teenagers, nobody cares about any, like life is cheap, right? Like if you, if, if it's okay for your neighbor or for your wife um, to just murder her baby in her womb and it's okay. Or if like the head of Planned Parenthood goes to your church, at least she's hearing the gospel, nobody cares, right? Like that's what happens, yeah. you know? I mean, three of these kids that we yeah. got were in a gay home and um, they didn't want the girl any longer, all right, because she was causing problems. So um, they just wanted to keep the two boys. And they went to a church, a very big church, you know, here in town. And um, here in, in, uh, in uh, Frisco. Frisco. Yeah, um, Life, um, Life Church. One of those. Um, oh, yeah, we accept anybody. No. Yeah, right. Jesus but, you know, most all the churches, like this church is so big, you can't be held accountable. You know, I mean, church was never designed like this, ever. This is like not like a, a biblical concept of how church should be, you know? I mean, it's not. I mean, you can watch Francis Chan, and I don't agree with everything Francis Chan, but he, when I was in California, he had a mega church, you know? And he was from the same town as me. And I never went to his church, but, you know, he was a mega church pastor, and he, he gave it all away. And they're really mad at him, right? Because he comes out and says, why do we spend millions, like tens of millions of dollars on a church like this when we could do it for free in a biblical manner you know because like can you imagine everybody gives their money here right if that money instead of it going here for like hundred thousand dollar playgrounds or half a million dollar playgrounds in the church that money actually went to adopting kids in this community you know yeah. so I mean it'd be it'd be huge right the difference so anyway and, and we're not mad at anybody we just want people to see like like they are human and what does Christianity look like in a culture where child sacrifice goes unopposed and is legal? Like and you know what? Like that we could make it illegal. If We've just got the pastors some who are actually um, involved in the political process right now. We've got some people who are in Austin and who are in Yeah, Dallas. I know them all. I know Tim Timberholt and I know, but you know what? This pastor, all the big pastors in, in Dallas, they're not supporting him. They didn't show up. You guys didn't have a hundred people show up to the rally down in Austin. Oh, okay. 
there was nothing. You, like, I can't find one sermon where you guys talked about it and said, hey, you guys need to call um, Tony Timberholt and, and, like, you know, push him. And you know, you know why? Do you know why that bill got tabled? That, that the abolitionists put through, that wrote, the abolitionists actually wrote this and he adopted it, is because the pro-life leader tabled it. He's like, no, nah, we don't want to call abortion murder. That's what he said. The pro-life guy. What's his name? The right to life guy. I don't remember. I'm kind of I'm, I'm like the Homer Simpson abolitionist. Yeah. But um, you know, if you contact me, I could I could show you. But and nobody cares. None of the pastors are like, oh, this got tabled. Call him and tell him. You know, yeah. um, n like it should be it because you know, like in Amos five, um, God says, put away your instruments. Stop worshiping me. Um, though your prayers be many, I don't hear them. You know, bring justice to the land first, and then I'll accept your praises and worship. That was all over child sacrifice. Child sacrifice was going unopposed in, in the land of Israel. And we're like a million times worse than them. You know, Hitler only killed 6 million Jews compared to 61 million abortions. It's like judgment, like, like let's just say I'm a Christian, which I think I am, right? But when Christ judges our land and wipes it, wipes it out, I'm gonna, my kids are gonna die. I'm gonna die. I get to go to heaven, you know. But I want to establish justice in this land, you know. And and pastors like this pastor and many others around the church, they just lull everybody to sleep to feel good about themselves, and not actually do the work that men in the community are supposed to do. Like we're supposed to stand at the gates and protect our communities, you know. Like you can take a pill right now and have an abortion at Walmart, at Walgreens, at CVS. Why, we know it's wrong, you know, and all it is is a vote to make it go away. And you know what, if the 70,000 Christian pastors, not all the, like the Mormon pastors or the priests, not those guys, but the ones that are like from Christian churches, if just them went to our governor, we already have book t um, laws on the books that say abortion is illegal. He could go right now and close all the abortion clinics and he could go and um, arrest all the abortion doctors and abortion would be done. He could go um, take all everything off the shelves. We could do that like this. Do you have that on your you have, you have a website? Yes, it's it's all on there. But if just the pastors went to the governor, he would do it. Can you imagine how fearful the governor would be if all the pastors rose up and cried out before him? You know, that'd be like that'd be scary, right? <laughs> For him. Um, it's abolish human abortion um, dot com, and then we have I think right here. Um, you can Google abolish um, abortion in Texas. Let me see here. But um, I hear what you're saying. I know that there are a number of people who are trying to get something done. Right. It's the, it's these guys in Texas, like um, Bradley and Wesley. Wesley's a lawyer, and there's 11 um, senators that signed on. I, I think there actually is more than that right now. But there's a um, a pastor. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the guy that killed it actually goes to, like, a First Baptist church, and he's pro-life. Um, down toward, no, it's like an hour and a half away from here. David something. Um, um, yeah, I'm not seeing your website on here, so I'll just Google. Yeah, just abolish Google. abortion, Texas. Yeah, yeah. and also uh, Abolitionist Society of Little Elm. You can get in contact okay. with me. Oh, there it is, right there. Abolish abortion, Texas. Oh, there. <laughs> it's the biggest. Oh, the big <laughs> so used to having to search the little print. Yeah. <laughs>